Welcome to the Miami Day College Journals and Speaker Series. I'm your host, Manolo Barco. Joining us today is Al Diaz, a photojournalist from the Miami Herald. Al, welcome to the show. We're very, we're privileged to have you. Thank, thank you for having me. It's great Al, to be here. Let's get this out of the way. Uh, talk to us a little bit about the Miami Heat. You've been shooting this playoff run that they've been in. Uh, talk to us how exciting that is, and I'm sure it's pretty cool to be on the court. Oh, absolutely. It's the best seat in the house, and uh, it, it's, it's exciting, it's thrilling. Um, and when something spectacular happens on the court and I get the picture, it's, it's, it's uh, fulfilling. And obviously, that's not, you don't, you don't come become a photographer and all of a sudden start shooting stuff like the Miami Heat yeah. uh, playoff run. Talk to us a little bit about the beginning, how you first started uh, getting into photography. Well, um, I, when I was young, um, I started in high school, but, uh, but I think the interest started when I was uh, very young and I would sneak into my parents' bedroom and I'd open up a drawer and there'd be a box of, of pictures and stuff from Cuba and us, my brother and I, when we were, you know, babies and, and you know, like, wow. so, Taking you know, I, I look at all these pictures and I, I think that might've sparked some interest, you know, when I look back and think about it. And, um, and then um, in high school, I, um, I started mowing lawns in the neighborhood to raise money. And um, um, so just, you know, so spending some little spending cash and, uh, um, I, um, you know, was was doing that, and I started to get the interest, the idea of buying a camera. Mm -hmm. And I, I walked into a, a classroom, and I went to LaSalle High School, walked into a classroom, and um, I saw Gus Pupomayo there. And he was, uh, uh, had a, it was an empty room, and he had a, a circle, a, you know, th three-dimensional objects, a circle, a square, and a rect, and a, like a sphere type of thing, and um, triangle. And he had a floodlight, and he was lighting it up with the floodlight. And I said, Gus, what are you doing? And he said, well, I'm taking a photography class through the mail, and this is one of my assignments. And so, oh, and you know, we started chat chatting about photography. And he says, oh, you should join the camera club. OK, at LaSalle in my high school. So that was freshman year. And so I started you know, taking pictures of all my classmates and, and, and um, you know, working that. And then I joined the newspaper, the, the, uh, the Royal Courier, and the, our, our yearbook. Uh, in high school, so I did that for four years, and um, it was great. So when I graduated from high school, um, I decided to come to Miami Dade South, and um, uh, and I thought, well, I should join the the newspaper. The, at the time, it was called the Catalyst, and so I had a portfolio of eleven pictures. Met Mario Garcia, uh, the the advisor for the newspaper, and um, with my and, and I got a chance to start working at the Catalyst at Miami Dade. Um, so um, that uh, so then you know I was photographing every day, and um, <clears throat> I was enjoying it. And I joined. Uh, but go go back a second. So you yeah. said you were photographing it every day. I hear a lot of photographers say that. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about the importance of doing that, even if it's not necessarily the greatest photo in the world. But you're practicing your craft every day. Right, I'm practicing my craft, um, and you 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 learn. You 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 practice and you learn, and you you see what works and what doesn't. Um, you know, back in the day, we were, you know, f we were processing film, and you'd see your, you, you, you didn't have an, you didn't have instant gratification. You couldn't chimp, which means that you would take a picture and then look in the back of the screen and see what you have. No, you had to process the film, so there was a whole process. So you had to shoot, you know, overexpose, underexpose, figure out what the lighting was. Um, you know, it was uh, much more difficult. Uh, focus, manual focus. There wasn't autofocus. Um, so you, you had to practice the craft and then get familiar with the camera and where all the settings were and everything. So I, I learned that, and um, one of my classmates, Stan Batts, um, uh, you know, we learned that. We need to shoot every day and, and practice. And, you know, we, we'd entered some contests and stuff, and we, were, we had great opportunities here at the, at the, the paper. And um, um, what kind of things did you shoot where you were here at the college where you're in well, see? It was a smaller <coughs> place back then yeah. in the mid-70s, mid so, right? So, yes. Um, so some, you know, news and stuff, but I was into, you know, breaking news, so, you know, there'd be an accident down, you know, someone get into an accident on campus and I'd take, you know, pictures of that or, or some event, you know, on campus and we'd photograph that. Um, and, um, uh, but then, you know, I started liking to photograph sports. Um, and, because uh, in high school I, I, I played football. So, you know, I'm into the, to that. Um, I'm a, more of a sports fan, not a fanatic. But uh, I enjoyed, so I enjoyed shooting sports, and so I met up with the sports information director here at, on campus at Miami Dade, uh, Jim Cox, and he invited me to photograph the baseball team, the basketball team, and, and I'd go to start shooting the, those events. And so 
um, and I would photograph and he would pay me. And uh, it was great. So it was one of my early jobs. I, I tell people, I see him now. I see him at the Heat Games. And, uh, hey, Jim, how are you? And, and, um, I, and I introduce everyone. This is one of my first, uh, my bosses in photography was Jim Cox. That's amazing. That's amazing. So when you were here on campus, uh, what are some of the things that you, I mean, t talk to me a little bit about some mistakes that you might have made, things that you learned from those mistakes. Well, um, so, so I'm photographing for, for the paper. Um, uh, yeah, it's just learning how to expose correctly, um, anticipate the moment, um, you know, so, so it was all about practice and, and learning and what, what works and what doesn't, uh, you know, uh, avoiding the backlight and, you know, so people don't come out silhouette. You, you, you know, you look in the LED today and it's like, oh, the, the, you know, it's kind of dark, you know, so you know to adjust, but back then it's on film, so you didn't learn until after the fact. Um, so we, we would, you know, shoot often. And, um, and I say we because I'm, I'm thinking of Stan and, and, you know, the other photographers on staff at the time. But um, uh, so one of the things we did was um, Stan and I, uh, we would go cover events. And so we did, we went to um, a concert, um, Bicentennial Park, downtown Miami. And um, <clears throat> we would, uh, we would, you know, shoot everything. So he introduced me to a photographer that showed up named Kathy Willens. And she was uh, pretty, pretty much a trailblazer blazer for the Associated Press. And I met Kathy and she uh, um, suggested I come by the office and visit. So I did and it was a thrill and to meet all these photographers. And she introduced me to Phil Sandlin. And so those are my early mentors other than Mario Garcia and, um, um, you know, here at, the, at the Miami Dade, I, I met Kathy and, and Phil, and I started hanging out at the AP office, and I wouldn't leave. I'd just go. You moved in. You moved <laughs> I was in. able to drive, and I'd just go, and I kind of moved in. And uh, I, I noticed that everyone was using police scanners, and so I bought a police scanner, used one. <clears throat> I only had for like four channels. Uh, they had these little crystals, and you can. You, I, so I installed it in my car, turned it on, and all of a sudden things blew up. There was a um, a house that the police were surveilling in in Miami, Little Havana, <clears throat> near my childhood home, and um, there's a police shootout. One of the suspects from the house went off and and uh, got into a shootout at some empty lot somewhere. And then there's a police officer gets on the air and he says, "I need backup." So he starts screaming for backup. So so I say, and the address, the same where he's at, and the address is near my house. And so it's like I'm going to the house. So I go, go over there, I get there. It's a small residential area. I'm across the street. So there's all these officers, all these cops with guns drawn and, and, and all this. And I hide behind a car across the street. And it's like, you know, it's close, it's close. So, so. Uh, so yeah. I'll, I hate to cut you off. We have to take a momentary break. We'll come back with that story. We're gonna be on a cliffhanger, but we'll be right back with Al Diaz of the Miami Herald. Learn and earn today at Miami-Dade College. College graduates earn 56% more than high school graduates and a million more lifetime earnings. A degree from MDC is your path to greater earning power and career success. Choose from hundreds of affordable high-tech and in-demand career programs, including cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, business, and nursing. Learn and earn today at MDC and fast-track your career. Enroll now at mdc.edu slash purpose. Welcome back to the Journalism Speaker Series. Uh, we're here today with Al Diaz. Al, you were telling us about your, uh, can you continue that story? It seems very riveting. Yeah, so, so uh, I'm in a residential area in Little Havana and uh, all these cops, you know, drug house. Um, it's doing the, co you know, cocaine cowboys, 1979. So um, um, it's, um, so I'm, I'm getting pictures of these, you know, I'm hiding behind a car and shooting pictures of cops with all these guns and the suspects are coming out of the house and hands up. Um, one guy's wearing a cowboy hat. <laughs> it's like, it's like couldn't, you know, I, I didn't realize it then, but when I look at the pictures today, it's pretty amazing. And um, so I had it, so, so anyways, I, I get all this stuff. Um, motorcycle cop uh, drives by, looks at me, leaves me alone. That doesn't happen today. So, so it, it was amazing. So I get back to the Associated Press office and I walk in and it's a Phil. 
you know, I, I, I was just at a, a drug bust. Um, I've got these pictures. So he goes, runs in, soups the film, edits, puts four pictures on the wire. And it's like, you know, which is, uh, you know, shared nationally. And uh, so that was my foot in the door, opens it up, and now I'm hanging out with the AP photographers, going on assignments with them, uh, you know, during 79, 1980, um, Cocaine Cowboys, uh, riots in the streets, uh, you know, uh, McDuffie riots, uh, Cuban uh, boat lift, uh, you know, protests in Little Havana, Cubans protesting, you know, Fidel Castro and all that stuff. So it was an amazing time, lots of breaking news. Uh, being a, you were a very young guy then yeah. at that time. So tell me a little bit, how did you build the confidence to go out? You know, sometimes students have, uh, they don't have the confidence to go out <clears throat> and interview someone or talk to someone or definitely put themselves in a situation where there's like a drug bust going right. on. How did you build that up, build that <laughs> confidence up? I have no idea, <laughs> but I've kind of, like, I, you know, I've always been a shy person or, you know, um, uh, it, it may not come across it right now, but uh, um, it, uh, you know, it's hard for me to start a conversation with someone. But, um, but it, it's, uh, you know, the camera works as a shield. And so once I'm, I'm you know, I've got the camera to my face, I, I relax and, you know, go into auto, auto mode. Um, so, um, um, you know, so that helps build confidence. And, and one of the things is I learned over the years is you got to, if the picture's not good enough, you, you're not close enough. So, so I feel like I had to get tight. And so that's something I learned at the Associated Press was uh, get tight, tight and clean. And, um, and so that's when you look at my images, a lot of them are, a lot of times it's storytelling. Uh, the, you, you're not looking at it and trying to guess what's happening. It's, it's, you, you know what the story is and, and, and all the surrounding elements in the photograph tell a story. And that's what I try to capture in my images. So let's say you were a mad scientist creating the perfect photographer, right? Uh, what traits would you sprinkle in? I know you talked to me earlier off, off air a little bit about the three tenets or the three rules that you have. Yes. Um, so, so I, well, I would say that you, you can't be shy. You, you need to get in there. Um, you can't hide behind people uh, to try to take pictures. Uh, there's one thing about layering and framing, but um, that's, that's good. But if it's a distraction, it's, it's not, it's not, you know, you don't want uh, uh, things that distract the image, which would be hot spots, you know, white, white paper, white uh, shirts and stuff. If you're going to frame, you want to, uh, you know, get the eye to go to the center focal, focal point in the image. Um, but the three, one of the three pillars that I follow that I've, I've created in my head is uh, chasing the light. You know, so you walk in a room and, and you know, whether it be the sunlight, uh, you know, coming through a, through a trees, uh, the leaves, uh, um, shining through the blinds of a window, um, you know, early morning light, late afternoon light, you're always chasing the light. And, and, uh, and that creates an element that, that makes a picture interesting. And um, uh, chasing light, this decisive moment, which is the peak of the action. Um, you know, whether it be an animal or a person or an event, whatever it is, you're always looking for the peak action. You don't want it just somebody just sitting there and staring into space. You know, I, I think that's, that's boring. You, you want some element, either, you know, even with the hands and the gestures of their hands. Uh, you know, if, if I have doing something mundane like a press conference and it's just some talking head, um, I need to get them gesturing. I can't just have them there standing behind a microphone. Um, so I'm always looking for the decisive moment. You know, the peak action, the ball in the air, tips, of, you know, just at the tip of the finger, and not in their hands, just before it's in their hands. That's the decisive moment, uh, mid-flight, anything like that. Um, so, and then the, finally, the um, um, visualize. And I learned that in high school from um, my high school coach, Carmen Grosso. So he ta taught us for four years of high school football, um, taught me how to visualize, and which is to anticipate, anticipate the play. Uh, what's going to happen? Which way they're going to? Which way the play is going? Who's got the ball? Anticipate the fumble. Anticipate uh, the tackle. All that. So, so I learned that, and so I apply that to visualizing in photography. Anticipate which way the suspect, uh, the the subject is going to turn. Uh, they're going to go left or right. Which is the flow of the the, the action. Um, uh, and so I visualize what's going to happen. I do that every day. And how how different is it shooting something like sports? Uh, and maybe something that's more of a newsy, uh, newsy thing, something that's more news-oriented. Uh, how different is that? Um, well, a different skill set or? 
Um, no, I'm, I'm, using, I'm applying all, all three of those pillars uh, to visualize, uh, chase the light. I don't want it to be backlit. Um, I want the you know, side light if I can, um, place myself in position to get the best light, uh, place myself where I anticipate and visualize the, where the action is gonna go. Um, and, and of course, when the action comes towards me, the decisive moment. Now, with news, same thing. I'm, I'm chasing, I'm trying to anticipate. Um, you know, of course, things blow up in front of you. And, um, and you've got to be ready for that. a situation where you have bad lighting, a particular room that has not right. have very and good lighting. So, so that's where you, you, the idea of you photograph every day, so you get familiar with all sorts of lighting and what, how to, to uh, um, adjust your camera naturally with like, you know, like an extension of yourself. And so you know what to adjust and all the settings and everything. Um, I believe if you're going to have two cameras, that they're, they're the same, so that when you pick one up or the other, you know, with different lenses, you know where all the settings are. So you can do things because you need, when you shoot news, it's a fractions of a second. You have to capture the moment, that decisive moment. It's instant. And if you're not ready for the moment, you're going to miss the picture. Perfect. All right, well, we'll take, uh, we'll take another break. We'll return with Al Diaz of the Miami Herald. Thank you for joining us today. We'll be back soon. Learn and earn today at Miami-Dade College. College graduates earn 56% more than high school graduates and a million more in lifetime earnings. A degree from MDC is your path to greater earning power and career success. Choose from hundreds of affordable high-tech and in-demand career programs, including cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, business, and nursing. Learn and earn today at MDC and fast track your career. Enroll now at mdc.edu slash purpose. Welcome back to the MDC Journals and Speaker Series with, with Al Diaz today of the Miami Herald. Al, um, let's, let's talk a little bit about when you joined the Miami Herald and how that took off for you. How, how did it happen for you? How did you start at the Miami Herald? Well, <clears throat> well, from, um, um, from Miami Dade College, I attended University of Florida, joined a uh, school paper there, and, uh, and I was stringing for AP, so I, I did internships. And I think internships are extremely important. Um, uh, and you want to find mentors. Uh, and I had excellent mentors with Kathy Williams, Phil Sandlin, uh, Mario Garcia here, uh, um, and, and then the staff at the Associated Press, Mark Foley. I did an internship in Tallahassee uh, with Mark Foley, all while I'm attending the University of Florida. I would take breaks um, during the uh, you know, summer breaks and stuff. I would come down to Miami and string for, um, um, so I was stringer, you know, like a freelancer for Associated Press. Uh, and things would happen. There would be another riot in Miami. Um, news, heavy news. And so um, uh, I would go photograph in those events. Um, uh, Mark Foley, when I was in Tallahassee, uh, I was able to shoot sports. Um, uh, the, 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 uh, the legislative session in, in Florida, uh, you know, at the, at the Capitol. Uh, I spent the day with the governor, Bob Graham, uh, a day in the life. Uh, you know, so I, I was able to do uh, a lot, building up a portfolio. So when um, you know, I was almost getting ready to graduate, I said, okay, it's time. I need at least one more internship. So I started applying different places, mm -hmm. and including the Miami Herald, I came down and, and um, uh, for you know, Christmas break, they called me up and wanted to interview me. And I said, well, I applied for an internship. No, we, we have a job opening. And so I had built that portfolio because of all the things I was actively doing through my college years. Like you said, uh, you were ready for the moment when I it came. I was ready for it. So talk, talk to me a little bit about some of the stories that you've covered. You know, I'm, you've done obviously Hurricane Andrew, Champlain Towers. You talked um, the CPR, the CPR baby. If you can get a little bit into the CPR baby, well, one, which is a very unique story, right? Yes. Um, one of the things I, uh, when I do presentations and I talk about my, my work, uh, I talk about ethical dilemmas. And there's it, situations in my career where I photographed or I did not photograph something that I saw that just takes my breath away. So, um, uh, so. Uh, there was a picture that I shot um, while I was at the Herald that, uh, you know, I questioned whether that was the right thing to do. Something that was very personal uh, with, a, uh, with a child um, that was stuck in a uh, window and uh, under, under the burger bar. She was trying to break into her, not break into, she, she had lost her key and she was trying to get into her house and her friends were trying to help her and she was stuck in the, the, the burglar bars, um, you know, the, the security bars on the window. And so I saw her, I photographed her, 
called the, I had, we had two-way radios back then, and I called the office, they called the fire department, they came and helped her out. Uh, they ran the picture in the paper, and I'm like, you know, what, why, did I, why did I publish that? You know, why did I offer that up? You know, now I, you know, something that was kind of a private thing, and now it's out in the public, I felt horrible. So, so um, then later in my career, you know, as time, the years go by, I, I'm in Haiti, uh, earthquake in Haiti, I think it was 2010, and um, I'm photographing destruction, bodies, de death and destruction. Um, and um, <clears throat> I've been doing that, and I was there for several days, and then there's something I saw that caught my attention and just took my breath away. I saw it, and the reporter's sitting in front of me, and he's you know in the car, and I said, what, what's the matter, Alwa? And I was like, no, no, keep driving, keep driving. I didn't want to photograph it. I didn't want to see it again. I didn't just, it was, and it was uh, uh, a dog that was mauling the, a child, uh, uh, a, a dead corpse, and it was uh, like a toddler. And it's like, I, in my head, instantly, I'm thinking, no one's going to publish that. Why am I going to shoot that? I don't want that in brain in, ingrained in my memory. And um, uh, I, you know, didn't do it. And so we went a couple of blocks. And I said, turn back, turn back, because it's not going to go away. It's already burned in my memory. So, so come, go, let's go back, let's go back. So we went back, and it was the toddler in a red dress, uh, wearing a red dress that had, uh, had been killed during the earthquake, and the dog was mauling. So, so I, um, that was, you know, so years later, fast forward, and um, I'm driving on the 836 expressway, and um, there's an SUV that, you know, by the airport, I'm by the airport. Dolphin Expressway, and an SUV stops in front of me, and and um, I hear this muffled screaming, and I'm like, I was I had just gotten off the phone, I'm checking the phone, you know, uh, maybe I didn't hang up, I checked the radio, the radio's not on, I look in the back of the, you know, in the rear view mirror, there's nobody back there, you know, there's a car stop, there's no, and I look up, and there's a lady carrying a limp blue baby in her arms, she had just popped out of the car, and so. You know, it's like, so I get out and I run over to her and I said, what's, what's wrong? And uh, I says, the baby's not breathing. So I'm like shaking like a leaf and I turn and I, I, I turn and I see um, uh, someone that stopped and, you know, I'm trying to wave, um, you know, passersby to get, get their attention. And this uh, Lucilla Godoy pops out, runs over, grabs the baby, turns it over and starts patting her on the back. And I said, okay, well, that's, that seems like the right thing to do. Let me see if I can get some more help. And I turn, and I see back in traffic, there's a police, uh, police officer in a, in a marked vehicle. That, you know, I see this, the, the lights, and I go run over there, and I'm running down through traffic. And he's far, he's a distance away. So I get over there, tell him what's happening. Um, and he goes, right, lights and sirens, gets there. And I start running back to the, to, to the situation, and I'm like, I need to take a picture. By the time I get there, the officer's got the baby in his arms, and he's, he's shaking the baby, and the baby is breathing again. And it's like, I don't want to cause any you know, tension. I don't want to uh, uh, distress this woman. You know, if I start taking pictures of this, she, it's going to distress her more. Why, you know, all this is going through my mind. But I know at this point in my career, that I have to shoot the picture. It doesn't matter. I, you know, this is. I, I feel I'm, I'm doing a service by providing uh, what people don't see. That they're, they're, you know, uh, you know, they're not there. And so um, I want to raise awareness of, of anything that can can help a person in the future. Um, so, um, so I stop. Grab my camera out of my car. The baby stopped breathing. So I'm taking pictures of the officer with the baby. Um, uh, uh, and, and the baby's aunt, it was, the woman was his aunt, so Pamela Rousseau. So she's, she's begging for the, the baby to come, to get the baby back. So the officer gives her the baby, she drops down and starts doing CPR. I, I sh photograph it, it's um, 10 frames in two seconds. Um, and, um, and I got the, the photograph of the CPR baby. That photograph went, uh, you know, took it back to the office, the photograph went viral, um, uh, uh, raised awareness of the need for CPR. Uh, you know, the Red Cross, the American Heart Association, uh, um, but the, the, there's, I think the University of Miami, uh, everybody had a CPR, you know, later on, they had a CPR day 
to raise awareness of the need for CPR. And all because of this photograph. And so, and, and stuff a little bit of a lighter note, uh, you remained uh, connected with the family. You shot one year later, yes, right? Yes, so, so um, uh, the, the woman was a, a little upset with me, <laughs> and I heard it through the grapevine. And, um, and so, um, people explained to her what my, why, why I took the picture and what, you know, the, the importance of me photographing that to raise awareness, uh, which, uh, you know, change policy. It could change policy. It could, for anything, any breaking news situation, it could change policy, raise awareness, uh, cause people to act. And, and you, were able, you were able to photograph the family uh, yes. a year later, so, right? So a year later, I go back, photograph the, the family, and um, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 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 several months later, it was the child's birthday. Yeah. So, so uh, took pictures of, of uh, the baby at, at his birthday, and and uh, and we became friends. And, awesome. And, and, That's uh, amazing. Yeah. Um, well, thank you, Al, for joining us today, and uh, we will see you soon again on the MDC Journalism Speaker Series.